Hey guys, uh, this is part two of the survival bug out fanny pack belt thing. Uh, so last time I left off, I was saying, <clears throat> the last thing I said was actually, if you're badass enough, you don't even need that. And when I said that, I referred to flint, knife, and tarp. What I mean by that is, Cavemen, first men around before first civilization, didn't have anything. They didn't have knives, they didn't have tarps, they sure as hell didn't have nice clothing, and they made it. You know, you make a knife out of uh, stone, or you start a fire by rubbing two sticks together, you find metal ore and sand like the Vikings used to do in bogs. Uh, you smelt it by yourself, then you make yourself an iron blade, uh, you make your own clothing, you kill animals, you dress yourself in leather. I mean, if you have the skills to forage, to hunt, to survive, you're tough enough, strong enough to survive long enough without your body deteriorating while you're building up your supplies and food and you know every plant out there so you can treat any <clears throat> potential wound you may receive yeah sure you can survive without nothing I despite all my knowledge and training and everything I can I'm just not that much of a badass so I want to have these things with me and I know a lot of people Another thing I forgot to mention was I started doing this for two reasons. One was to show off my gear and stuff. But the other reason, which is just as important, while I was looking on YouTube uh, at all other different uh, kits and uh, people who've taken the time to talk about being prepared and survival and all of that, I've noticed uh, that a lot of people, for example, if you don't know anything about EDCs, PSKs, bug out bags, USKs, uh, all of that stuff. And you watch a video on how to make a, an urban survival kit or a bug out bag, and you listen to the guy talking, and you hear everything he has to say. He explains all his gear, what it's used for, how it's used for. And you say, wow, that makes a lot of sense. Actually, this guy knows what he's talking about. But then you read the comments, and you see sh uh, stuff like, dude, you're carrying enough way to kill a pack mule, you're going to die right away, you don't know crap what you're talking about, and then you go, well, I thought he knew what he was talking about, apparently all I need is a jock strap and a knife to survive in the wild, and if I take anything else, I'm a pussy. Ugh, excuse me, please. Ugh. That's dinner fucking with me. Uh, messing with me. So, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of haters on YouTube. I love the YouTube comment section, don't get me wrong. I think it's amazing the stuff people will say in the comments. I'm sure I'll get a lot of great ones if anyone watches this. So, this is what worked in my personal experience. I mean, I've used, as you've seen with already the few things I mentioned, I've used them for a long time. Uh, camping, hiking, going mountain climbing, uh, going mountain climbing and camping, uh, I've climbed mountains even in the jungle, so you got the whole jungle scenario, and you're climbing a mountain, except you're always knee high in mud, and there's a hundred and fifty percent humidity, bugs, mosquitoes, and the climb is almost vertical, uh, so yeah, I might not be the expert and the authority and everything, but I know what I'm talking about. And I can, I wanted to spread, if someone watches my video, I wanted to reference other people that I watched that I, I believe they know what they're talking about. One of them who I discovered that I think most people know that he does know what he's talking about and that he's honest and he tries a lot. And because a lot of times with uh, these survival kits and survivors, you get people, not all of them, of course, there's a lot of normal, cool people doing these things, but
but some are a little bit on the crazy side. Others are really cool, really honest, uh, hard, dedicated, working people to spread information on how to survive, what's good here, what's not good here, what they use, what they like, the reasons. And one guy who I found who I really like, I really like his reviews, I think he's working really hard, is the Nothing Fancy Project. And actually, he inspired me to go on with this, to make my own Warrior Craft project. And uh, do I not have the cash or the sponsors? or the manpower, although I think he only has three people helping him. Uh, this is my kit and I believe that uh, I will be spreading uh, not hate and if anyone hates my gear and everything I have to say I want to call me an idiot or get people killed, that's fine. Yeah, I don't think so. Because I have researched this a lot and uh, I do believe I know what I'm talking about to at least to a certain degree. And that I recognize other people who know what they're talking about. I'll be mentioning all others later, but I think if you are starting out in ED, uh, well, yeah, EDC and survival kits and all of that, you should check out uh, Nun Fancy Project. He has great stuff to say, great reviews about knives, guns, uh, bugger bags, long stay survival kits. Uh, and I looked at all of his videos and I thought they were great. And I will be following a similar format to what he had. So, skipping all of that, I uh, will move into the contents of this, ba of this bag uh, thing. So, let's start with the front. And here are some work gloves. They are nothing special. Leather with some reinforced synthetic. Uh, they're good for when you're working with your fire, uh, hot pokers, hot uh, pots from the fire. If you're working in a wrecked building, something that's been on fire like charred wood or hot blocks. Uh, these are used in construction work. Some people use them in a forge. I wouldn't go anywhere near molten metal with these, but they can come in very handy. Uh, I've used them in camping a lot, in working in building shelters. Uh, and working in the shop and making stuff. They're very handy. They're very cheap where I get them. Where I live, they're very cheap. So, uh, another flashlight, just in case. And I have lithium batteries for this one. It's really small but really bright. You can hang it on your belt, and that way it always shines right where you're stepping. I know that doesn't seem very important, but when all lights go out, and I've experienced this several times. I've experienced in Ecuador uh, where there were light rations, and it, they tell you it, that at this and this time all lights are going to go out, and you find yourself in the wrong part of the city where the lights are being cut. It's really dark without electricity. Our society depends on electricity. When the electricity is cut, when it gets dark, it gets darker than you've ever seen. And I've also seen real dark in the heart of, well, not in the heart, but in the Amazon rainforest and in other parts of the jungle and the mountains of Ecuador where you have no electricity for hundreds and hundreds and thousands of kilometers around you. It gets really dark, and if you're on a slippery road with rocks, it's really good to have a light shining right in front of you so you see where you're stepping so you don't slip, injure yourself, uh, or just get dirty and wet and injured. And I've also experienced that during the winter here, uh, this winter, the whole country is spending so much electricity that they were shutting off all street lights and you find yourself really dark and it's just not pleasant. Sure, you can hide very well in the dark, but you do want to see what's going on. Uh, carabiner for the hat. And let's move on. In this front pouch here, I have a compass. Quickly access, well, semi quickly. It's uh, pretty decent. It's pretty heavy. It works. I've tested it. It's new ish. I have it for about five, six months. It served me okay. It points north. Uh, this is a million times Zippo match. It's got up here up top all of that splint 
and then you pull out your Zippo Striker match, which looks like that, and it's got a little Zippo, it's got a little cotton and a little Zippo in here, uh, and then you just rub a little plant on there, and Easily, easier usually. And uh, I also ordered this online from China, and the manufacturer said it's good for a thousand strikes, thousand thousand lights, thousand lights, not thousand strikes. So you're supposed to be able to light it a thousand times. And uh, even if the whole Zippo fluid thing uh, runs completely dry, you can still it's still a great fire starter with just some tinder. You can light a fire. All ten of these were like ten bucks. Free shipping also again online, also again from China. You can get some great stuff in China. And since I'm not American, I don't really feel like I don't have to support the American economy. I can support whoever the hell I want with my money. And it's a decent enough product. It's stainless steel. It's waterproof. And I've dunked it in water and kept it in there for a day. I just wiped this off with my t-shirt, pulled out the striker, and it worked like a charm. Snare wire, also good for setting your pots over fire, whatever. It's got some million, millions of uses. It's not too much, but it's enough to keep you fed for about maybe three or four days. If well, actually, if you don't lose your snares, if you don't ruin the wire, it is thin, so it will break. Not too easily. I've cooked on it. I've had my pots, and you just gotta be gentle with it, and it'll work fine. It works fantastic for snares for small animals. It won't hold anything bigger than a rabbit, but if it'll hold a fat freaking rabbit if you set your snare right. Uh, another blade, foldable. This is just another uh, inexpensive china shop blade. I've used it not so much, but it's been really good. And it's a backup blade, so there's no need for it to be perfect. Uh, this is just to see if something's level. Uh, I really don't know why I need this for. It's just one of those things that uh, I have a hunch it might come in handy. Don't know why. Uh, wire snips, one for me one for someone else, or if they break or lose one, they're not really big, they're not really strong, they'll cut through this small wire, but, and thicker wire, but nothing really thick, I have dedicated wire snips, much bigger, much stronger, really sharp ones, they'll cut through really thick, really thick metal in my uh, tool bag, and I'll review my tool bag, which is actually a gas mask bag, which is filled with tools, but I'll do that later. Moving on, this army knife, just a regular Swiss Army knife. I uh, used it a lot, a lot, a lot. You see, it's missing the back. This puppy's got 15 years of use behind it. A uh, multi wrench tool, I mean, a uh, driver tool. It's got four screwdrivers of each kind the flat heads and the Phillips from regular size to really, really small. Well, not really, really small, but small enough. This is going to be great for electronics or if you need to open a panel, uh, an exit, if you need to open a... If you need to get into somewhere that's screwed, there's a lot of things in the city, if you are, because this is not just for the outdoors, but it's also an urban survival kit. This is basically a one-in-all belt. I would put this, I would grab this fanny pack, whatever's happening, and then add the small med kit on it. Then, uh, 
I will usually have my EDC with me because it carries everywhere. I will decide if I want to load up my EDC with the stuff that I have in my ops bag or would I take my long term survival bug out bag which is a huge camping bag uh, that's really heavy and it's loaded with a lot of stuff. I have just several systems and it's not just for me but for everyone around me because everyone around me, you know they're really unprepared and a uh, small meter, one meter long, good for measuring stuff, makes it easier to make your camp uh, that's neat and organized. And uh, I ran out of time again and I didn't cover anything, I know I get sidetracked, and I will continue this with uh, part three.